China is taking steps to help its econo economy recover amid the coronavirus pandemic. For more on that, I'm joined now by Yan Liang. She's a professor at Lamet University. Um, talk to us about steps that China is taking to try and jumpstart the economic recovery. Thank you, Mike, for the questions. Um, so the Chinese government has taken a series of very effective measures um, on the physical front. The government has issued special purpose uh, bonds um, in the amount of 2.15 trillion uh, yuan. Actually, now the amount has been lifted to 3.75 trillion yuan. So um, the government is going to use the money that's raised by this bond issuance to finance infrastructure construction. Um, so that is going to help the stimulate the economy. Um, they also implemented tax and fee cuts um, for businesses. So that is also going to be helpful um, for um, private enterprises. Um, they also issue some, uh, you know, consumption uh, coupons for uh, uh, purchase, sort of the, uh, to help the uh, consumers to finance their purchases. Um, on the monetary front, um, they have cut the prime loan rates twice, um, once in February, once in April this year. And they also have cut the reserve requirement ratio um, three times this year um, to inject enough uh, liquidity to, to the market. So I think all these policies have proved to be uh, pretty effective. Um, the GDP growth rate has um, uh, revived to 3.2% uh, growth rate in the second quarter. Um, so we're seeing sort of the silver lining of the economy getting better. And there's some people even talking about a V-shaped recovery for China. It's interesting because, you know, you look at the United States and you see a lot of these small businesses that some are saying may never come back. So give me your sense of the terrain there in China. Is it smaller businesses that are suffering the most, medium-sized enterprises? Uh, who's really taking it on the chin? Right. I think, you know, the small and medium-sized enterprises, they are taking a big hit um, during this crisis and the economic lockdown. Um, the government has presented a lot of um, alternatives for them. For example, the government has ordered commercial banks to lend. Um, you know, this year we have seen a huge increase in lending to the small businesses and micro-sized businesses. They have borrowed around 13 trillion yuan by the end of May, and that is about a 27 percent increase from last year. And they also were given very good um, loan rates. Um, their average loan rate was 6.3, uh, 0.3%, which is, again, lower um, than previously um, by 0.67 percentage points. So they've been giving loans, and the government also implemented a plus role of policies, like helping them to advertise their products online, um, helping them to set up you know, trade fairs, um, helping to um, promote online you know, job openings and searches. So there are a lot of policies that are up front to help small and medium-sized businesses, which help them to um, cope through, you know, these very tough times. But that said, I think, you know, they're still suffering. They're still um, in a slow recovery, um, especially the export prospect is still pretty bleak, and um, domestic retail sales are still pretty weak. You, you mentioned the coupons to lure shoppers back into the stores, but I've got to ask you, what do you do to mitigate the fear piece of all of this? Because uh, we're seeing occasional flare-ups. We just had a report, Hong Kong, Xinjiang. Uh, we've also seen it in Beijing, uh, in, in a border region near the DPRK. How do you manage that? Because studies have shown that consumer confidence craters during a recession. It's fallen dramatically here in the United States. So how do you boost that feel-good feeling? Because consumer confidence is a leading economic indicator. Right. Well, that's a great question. Um, it's difficult to move the needle, right, when the consumers are worried about their jobs, um, their income in the, in the future, and also that just, as you said, the health consequences of going out to spend. Um, but luckily, I think um, the government has done it in a smart way. They have given out those online, you know, retail sort of uh, online purchasing uh, coupons. So people who have uh, purchased a lot of their um, products online, um, the online uh, retail sales actually jumped by 7% this year so far. So um, that is a sort of alternative way um, for business, for um, consumers to spend their money. Um, the coupons has, you know, proved to be effective in some places. There are 42 cities where the local governments are giving out these, you know, digital coupons. Um, in Hangzhou, uh, in Hangzhou uh, City, for example, there's research that has shown that, you know, every $1 coupon is able to bring up consumer spending by 3.5 yuan. Uh, one, one yuan to 3.5 yuan. Um, but there's still very limited, you know, uh, uh, effects of that. You know, for one is um, the, the coupon size is still slow. On average, you know, every consumer is only getting about $3 um, coupon. So that's not really a huge help. 
Um, and for two, it varies from city to city. You know, some of the richer cities, they're able to afford, you know, bigger stimulus than others. And like you said also, I think um, if, if China is able to, uh, if not able to improve its employment um, and, you know, stable income for people, then just by giving this one-time coupons is not going to help very much with consumer demand. Yeah, well, we'll keep our eye on it. Thank you so much for joining us from the state of Oregon. Appreciate it.